This is Swiss Canal. Since the inauguration of Swiss Canal in 1869, it has emerged as one of the greatest symbol of globalization. This man-made waterway in Egypt connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea and forms the shortest link between Asia and Europe. Around 12% of global trade and 30% of global container traffic pass through this canal. This 193 km long canal is a transit of more than 1 trillion dollars of trade annually. But due to increasing transport collapses, the vulnerability of Swiss Canal is also increasing. The most recent one is ever given incident. As you may remember last year, a giant container ship of 400 meter long, equivalent to 4 football grounds, struck across the Swiss Canal causing the disruption of global supply chain. Almost 300 cargo ships could not pass through it and more than hundreds of them were diverted from their actual route, causing the loss of $54 billion in just 6 days. According to S&P Global Flights, the charges of 40-foot container was $1,040 in 2022, which was increased by 4 times to $4,570 in 2021. This is the reason why most of the countries started exploring the alternative for Swiss Canal. The most prominent alternative which comes out to be is Northern Sea Route. The reason why Northern Sea Route is, if you look at this map, this is the existing sea route and this is the Northern Sea Route. So basically, if you want to travel from East Asia to Western Europe, the shortest route is via Malacca Strait, Indian Ocean, Gulf of Aden and Swiss Canal which is approximately 21,000 km and it takes roughly around 48 days. But if you look at the Northern Sea Route, it cuts the travel to just 12,800 km and reduces the time journey by 10 to 15 days. This is the reason why Northern Sea Route is considered to be the one of the most prominent alternative for Swiss Canal. However, the only problem with Northern Sea Route is sea ice. Only 2 to 4 months in a year from month of May to September the surface water ice of the Arctic is low. In the remaining months, the entire Arctic water is frozen. If somehow this northern sea ice is cleared, then it becomes an uninterrupted maritime highway between Asia and Europe all throughout the year. And since the northern sea route lies well within the Russian Arctic coast, obviously they will have a greater influence in this region. And it will be Russia's backyard. If somehow Russia manages to get rid of this sea ice and build infrastructure in northeast and southeastern region, then Russia can easily control almost 48% of global trade. Even Russia understands this. This is the reason why Russia is heavily investing in northeastern region and making heavy duty icebreakers. Now, what are icebreakers? These are heavy duty ships through which Russia navigates in sea ice. Russia operates world's largest fleet of major ice breaking ships. These heavy duty ships dominates the frozen sea of Arctic. Russia also has a nuclear powered ice breakers and they are intending to have more such ice breakers. One of the main objective of these ice breakers are to clear the shipping lanes for commercial vessels. And also Russia is developing various ports in northern Siberia to make shipping lane even more robust. With the help of all these infrastructures, Russia claims that by 2024, 80 million tons of goods will pass through northern sea route annually. And once Russia gets success in developing this transit, this will be very bad scenario for western countries. As with the help of this transit, Russia can easily control the global trade and establish their dominance in global economy. And this route will also play a vital role in Russia's plan to become a superpower again.